It's like they massively turned the dial up on Whale Week. Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I want to talk through some of the weird, slightly odd, not necessarily bad events that Raid are running at the moment. And I guess give my view on them. I'm sure some of the community are hating them. And we're in this kind of like period in between fusions. So quite often in this period, we see stuff that we either just skip or we're kind of like, what's going on with these rewards? There's no incentive to do it. And I just want to talk you through it. So today's a great day to have a look at it because we've got stuff going on with Essence. I'm just going to farm up here. I've just farmed up Iron Twins using 12 keys. I do this from time to time. I do it every single Sunday. And then during the week, I normally on my main account farm six keys. Okay. Although I've kind of switched a lot of my energy nowadays to Sand Devil. So it gives you a feel. Sometimes I don't farm Iron Twins at all anymore. Because the drop rate, honestly, is disgusting. It's awful. And it, it kind of feels so demoralizing to waste your energy in this place. So even as an endgame account, I don't really farm Iron Twins anywhere near as often as I think I should. Just because it's kind of like, why would I do that? For Raid, I just got to call this out. You need to improve the rewards in this dungeon. My free-to-play, it's no point going anywhere near it. Well, and that's fine. My free-to-play is not kind of like an old enough, developed enough account. But even players with accounts that make some sense to go in this place, is so bad. The, the drop rate is just way too low. So I've used 12 keys today, 240 energy, 150 gems. And I've got one baby soul, uh, baby soul close to two. And I've got five essence. It's really bad. Okay, so this is one area where you can get this stuff. Raid have now dropped today this champion training event. Now, this is kind of interesting, right? Because you've got this same, uh, the, the currencies, it's all soul stuff. My free to play, I literally take one look at this and I think there's, li there's zero point. Zero point in me being here, okay? So that's, that's the first thing. Like for a, a younger account, this is not worth your energy, not worth your time. If you're just developing champions anyway and you get some stuff in here, fine, whatever. But don't feel like I'm going to force myself to go in here, okay? A couple of other things is, I don't think they understand the correlation between their, their point scoring. You've got here, early on, basically 100 soul coins here, the immortal ones, is worth two immortal soul essence. So you get that after 350 points. Like these numbers down here for the soul essence are way too low, Plarium. Like you don't understand your own game. These numbers are, are ridiculously low. It's like three soul essence. You're basically giving us the same as you're giving us after 350 points for 4,300 points. So that's a bit weird. But some of this other, the soul coin stuff, is actually very difficult to get. And this is worth a lot more than some of the farming you've just seen me do with my 12 keys today. So for me on my end game account, this is actually kind of an interesting event. I'm not saying good, because it's not good, but the Immortal Soul Stone, it's very hard to get those on the main. 200 of this big currency, 750 of the Immortal Soul Coins, that, that's actually kind of decent. And what I've kind of switched, I switched my focus in the Altar of Souls now to basically converting all of my um, all of my soul coins into essence, yeah? So I'm basically always topping up the essences now with the view of trying to get some big boy souls going. I was going the other way initially, like especially with these, I was turning these into the big boy immortal souls, uh, the, the kind of like the, the luck, I guess, luck of the draw type of stuff with the eternal soul stones. But it's just so unlikely to get what you actually want that I've stopped doing that and I'm just trying to buy the right souls at the right time if I can get the stuff. So, you know, picking up this essence or these soul coins and the essence is actually pretty valuable to an endgame player, I think. So I'd be interested to see like who's doing that. If we then look at the other event that they dropped yesterday, which again was very endgame focused, but 
superior oil, greater oil. This is this is very costly to get in the sand devil, like very costly. I've been farming a lot of sand devil recently, and you know, to pick up 50 big pots and 50 greater pots, it's actually kind of good. So again, for an end game player, this is like it's like it's whale week. It's like whale weeks come out. We're giving you the stuff to enhance your kind of like PvP style accounts. We're doing the essence which enhances PvP style accounts. Oh, and by the way, we're dropping a load of events for PvP champions. It's like it's like they massively turn the dial up on Whale Week. So I guess the other place where you can get the souls and stuff is in Hydra. Just reset today. And this is like by far the best place to get the soul stones, especially if you're a later game player, because you generally pick up a few a day. Uh, I'll check that out in a minute, all the gear. But yeah, you tend to pick up like there's three so far. Um, probably going to end up picking up like five or five, six, seven, eight. So that's the equivalent of me doing almost like a week's worth of farm without using any gems. So you kind of got like Iron Twins versus Hydra. Well, Hydra is free in terms of energy. It's hard to beat some of the higher levels. But if you're an end game player, this is really where you farm soul stones. And I think you know, just talking to the players in like the, the higher end clans, most people buy soul stones if they're going to be doing stuff with soul stones. They don't farm Iron Twins. You know, they do it very irregular. So an event like this actually is probably not bad for an end game player. Uh, we've just had news as well drop that there is going to be yet another shard event for whale week um so we've got two times chance to get void champions from void shards on uh at the weekend yeah that, that's always going to be a case but they're actually adding in the mix another arena champion another top tier arena champion that is going to be leorius i'm actually going to be doing a almost like a tier list for arena nukas uh, in the coming couple of days. Leorius, I think Mac Chan called out as who he thinks is the best one, pretty sure, or up there anyway, one, like top three. And Leorius is really good. So I do use mine in live arena a lot. I don't really use him as much in plat reset um, because plat reset is a bit of a different type of game mode for me. I don't have enough protection for him to be top tier for plat. But for live arena, he's a god. And for normal arena, he's a god as well. By the way, outside of arena, this is a brilliant champion. Um, but I'm sure that people are probably struggling with void shards. You know, my free to play, I've got like four. I've got a couple left over here from a pretty disappointing yesterday. So, you know, it was after Taris yesterday. Didn't get him, didn't get anyone. But anyway, Leorius, double hitter on his A1 with drop defense. He's got a double hit AoE on his A2. When he's not used this skill, he's basically immune to all of the crowd control. So stun Uko, provoke Uko. No, you're not going to stun or provoke this fella. And, you know, fears and stuff like that. It's not happening. Petrification, you know, Mithrala, it's not happening. So as long as you don't use his A2, he's actually immune to all of that stuff on a... And, and it was, will always be immune. As soon as you use it and it goes on a three-turn cooldown, then he can actually be crowd-controlled. So you can open with his second AoE, which is his A3, which has also got a chance of putting True Fear out there, uh, and weaken before attacking if you build him with some accuracy. He's got a nuke here, an absolute nuke here, and he does more damage the more damage he takes. So he can literally go down to one HP, puts unkillable on himself, He's then at full power, and at full power, he's basically Trunder level damage. So he doesn't have any inbuilt ignore defense, which is what a lot of the meta style nukers have got nowadays, but he's still really difficult to deal with and has got inbuilt survivability, which is brilliant in current arena meta. He's hard countered by a Rotos, albeit he also counters Rotos. He's, he's really one of these awkward champions, especially in live. If I see a Rotus picked, I'm like, well, we've got a double hit here, so we can take Rotus down. But also, Rotus can hit through our unkillable ability. So you kind of need a way to hide him away, or you need for him to go before Rotus starts swinging. But anyway, look, another shard event. We've got Whale Week. 
live and in action. Let me know what you think about it. I've been Hell Hades. I'll see you later.